Welcome back. Let's do a nice little exercise to solidify our knowledge of the this keyword. I have here three objects. And each one of them has a name and a say method that are slightly different. What do you think the this values or what do you think the log will be on the right hand side here? Let's start off with the first one. If I do b dot say, what's going to happen? What will this be? If I run this, did you get that right? This should make sense, right? This is the object, b. Nice and easy. OK, what about c? This time around, we're returning a function. So this might look a little bit confusing, but we're essentially saying the say function is going to return another function. So that's a function inside of another function. And that's going to return console log this. If I run this, or I should change that to see, if I run this, I get a function. That should make sense, right? When we run say, it returns for us this function. So if I run this function again, by doing this, what's going to happen? Who calls this function? This gets called first, and then this gets called. Let's find out. Whoops, I get an error. Again, remember, code sandboxes like this sometimes give out an error because this is an unexpected use of this. So this part, we have to copy and open it up in our console. If I copy and paste here and I run this, I get the window object because, well, remember, a method that has a function inside of it, that this gets bound to window, an unintended consequence of JavaScript, of dynamically scoped this. That was the tricky one. Let's refresh here. What about D, object D, that uses an arrow function this time around instead of just the function? So this is going to be lexically scoped. If I run this, well, I get a function. Nothing new, right? Because we return a function. But if I call this function again, and I run this, hey, look at that. It fixed our problem. Because the this keyword was lexically scoped inside of the arrow function, it doesn't care about where it was called. 